social media heterogeneity. Uh, Tableau Vivant as an intermediate figure and as a cultural and artistic practice with a long history of reenacting paintings or other works of art in various media can be a par excellence example of intermediate reframe, unframing and reframing. Uh, it opens up painting or sculpture towards uh, corporal reality, sensuality, three-dimensionality, and at the same time it reifies the body into a picture, displacing the carnal, the material towards artifice and discursivity. Uh, this is a of course, uh, this does not imply, of course, that otherwise paintings lack corporeality or bodies are devoid of discursivity. Um, a living picture or a tableau-like imagery, quoting pictorial or photographic or other uh, artistic conventions, can unframe and extend the picture towards other visual and performative art forms, like theater and performance, towards other institutional modes of mediation and reception. The cinematic tableau vivant is an exclusive, fo uh, ex sorry, elusive, <laughs> as, as an elusive fold between stillness and movement, imageness and embodiment, or imageness and corporeality, artifice and reality, animate and inanimate, does not only displace painting in the medium of the film, but also foregrounds the ungraspable, invisible stillness of the filmic image itself, withholding cinematic time into a suspended non-narrative temporality, the time of the image within story time. Together with long takes, slow motion or close-ups, tableaus direct the gaze towards artifice towards the opacity, the imageness of the Im image in a media reflexive way, enabling a contemplative, sensible spectatorship. The uncanny intermediality or mediality of the tableau-like shot or filmic tableau vivant, um, living picture unfolding in a kind of narrative tamor, um, consists in the way a medial difference is produced within the filmic medium itself. Tableau vivant, uh, vivant may figure the way the moving image is arrested by its own other stasis. Uh, Marcel Ivani's 1996 short film, Wind, can be considered an experiment of unframing and reframing from many perspectives, intermediate cultural film historical. The film is a recontextualization and reenactment of a 1951 photograph by Lucien Hervé entitled Three Women that is itself a picture, a photograph undoing its own frame. It represents three women looking beyond the frame that withholds the, objects, uh, the object of their look in an unsettling way. This deframes the photograph and as Deleuze and Gattari would put it, makes the picture leave the frame. The film, with a minimalist narrative and no dialogues, begins with a um, begins with a tableau vivant sequence quoting um, the photograph, displacing it towards the corporeality of the bodies reenacting it. This filmic tableau does not figure stillness uh, only, but rather the uncanny fold between, filmic, between the filmic and the photographic, between stasis and movement, corporeality and imageness, uh, overwriting the photograph through medial difference and displacing it as its origin. The wind is not only an element of the natural setting and uh, it does not uh, provide the diegetic sound, but it becomes visible as movement within stillness, amplifying at the same time the sculpture-like stasis of the bodies. Ivani's six-minute wor work is a short film of a single long take. The camera begins to move slowly and horizontally in a direction opposite to the one in which the three women are looking, creating, of course, a certain tension um, uh, uh, by this. A long shot of a bleak rural landscape follows, sorry, uh, stretching, so a, a long, again, a long shot of a bleak uh, rural uh, landscape follows, stretching the photofilmic and the citational quality of the initial tableau over the whole film. Um, a scene of an almost still execution follows later on. Um, uh, yes. It is not clear who the victims and who the executors are. This is presented as the scene uh, uh, the three women are looking at, and when the camera returns to their figures, it seems that it performed an entire tracking of uh, 30, 60 degree um, visual field, a panoramic movement. So we are uh, uh, coming back, and this, sorry, uh, yes. 
and these these are the the, the pictures uh, the, uh, the images we see the critical reception of the film reveals the density and the complexity of its minimalism uh, John Cunningham for example considers wind a film evoking a quote a host of resonances and references to the Hungarian past national identity to previous Hungarian films various artworks and aspects of culture and national folk memory and of quote and uh, he says that despite being dehistoricized, the execution scene, quote, carries a powerful resonance, uh, uh, quote, as a reminder of an often brutal past, uh, end of quote. Meg Rickards sees Wind as a meta film, a quote, elucidating cinema's meaning making process, end of quote. Uh, in Ivani's film, <clears throat> The camera performs a panoramic movement. It slides not only over the landscape of a great plain, but also over the landscape of cultural, historical, and film historical memory. It is not only the filmed events of the three women watching something and some people being executed that the viewer sees, but also the unfolding of the, Im of the Im image as event. The traveling of the gaze, the slow horizontal movement of the camera becomes an event itself, intervening into a photograph and into film history historical remembrance or memory. Ivani's film, through its theme and the unstable circular camera movement, remediates and at the same time displaces the historical technique of observation and image making, panorama and the panoramic gaze. Uh, Crary, discussing 19th century panorama, highlights the ambiguity of its spectatorial experience. The traditional panorama unframed the conventions of perspectival painting by its circularity, by displacing vertical boundaries. Uh, this is uh, related, according to Crary, also to the secularization of vision. Um, um, and it displaced um, the conventions of perspectival painting also, uh, uh, also by cancelling the vanishing point and any singular or static perspective that structures the whole visual field. As Crary argues, these large circular pictures with the illusion of perceptual mastery provided an imaginary unity and coherence to the external world, but at the same time deprived the spectator of the mastery of the whole picture. In Ivani's Wind, the panoramic gaze is unstable and mobile. It seems to approach and to move away from its object, and it reintroduces verticality to some extent through the movement of the camera, but and also through a diegetic movement, for example, that of the flying birds, and another one I'm going to speak about later. Um, 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 Béla Balázs considers that in panoramic takes, uh, the space is not merely the place in which people and things can be shown, it achieves a reality of its own and it has its own significance. The very emergence of cinematic landscape detached from narrative or diegesis in a tableau-like manner requires, according to Martin Lefebvre, not merely a long shot, uh, in this case of course a panoramic shot of a natural environment for instance, but a spectacular gaze or what uh, he calls a landscape gaze with the cultural knowledge of pictorial conventions. Here the plane as the theme of the panoramic landscape is part of a cultural geography inseparable from the dense literary historical art historical cinematic references, an emblematic and often unreflected stereotypical element inserted into various constructions of regional or national identity, a landscape culturally exploited and familiar and still retaining its ungraspability and foreignness. In the film, um, certain the, the, the imagery or the iconography of certain Hungarian films like that of Miklós Jancsó or Béla Tart, um, these films are not evoked only thematically uh, or on the level of what is represented, for example, the, the plane itself in its cultural polysemy and ambivalence as uh, Cunningham, John Cunningham states, but also through um, the visual um, stylization, through narrative elusiveness, through withholding clear dramatic causality through the aesthetics of slowness or long takes or still tableau-like images. All these make the film unfold as a reflexive, condensed, better trailer of a part of Hungarian cinema or of uh, film historical memory. In Ivani's cinematic panorama, in Ivani's uh, cinematic panorama, um, uh, just a minute, uh, again, um, mm, I lost the... Uh, 
uh, in Ivani's cinematic panorama, sorry, the illusion of the totality of representation of the full circle, so to speak, is counterbalanced by the elusiveness of the film. The capturing of the off-screen does not arrive as a narrative answer, but as a fold between revelation and inaccessibility. In the slow, gradual unfolding of the panoramic shot, the off-screen seems to loop on itself, to return to itself, but this return finds only difference and not self-sameness. The camera and the viewer return to the three women with the profoundly disturbing, traumatic image of, um, of an unexplained death that will continue in the absence, in the death of the image. Um, later on, the, the, the image uh, will disappear. Um, <clears throat> Uh, yes. Um, in the sequence of the execution, the equally inert, motionless bystanders and the dead bodies, as well as the image of the silent, almost unmoving agony, are part of a scene in which the stasis of death folds into the stasis of the image. The smooth, um, and this is the, uh, the uh, actually this, this is the sequence of an execution uh, happening. Um, uh, the smooth horizontality and continuity of the panoramic gaze and the unfolding image is disrupted or pierced through by the slight verticality of the diegetic movement of the hanged man's agonizing body, uh, like up, up and down on the scaffold. Um, the aesthetics of contemplating the landscape is disturbed by the anthropological social disquiet or trauma of the lived space that becomes a territory of violence or for violence the historically vague setting for an execution as public spectacle, not containable within aesthetic contemplation only. And this is a footnote, but I'm going to read it uh, now. Another good example of uh, <coughs> cinematic landscape becoming uh, territory would be another short film of a single long take, Balint Kenyeres's uh, film Before Dawn, in which a liminal space and time gradually turn into the territory of border, of illegal immigration, or even human trafficking, and where the visual invisibility of the immigrant anticipates, in a way, his, his uh, future social invisibility uh, uh, also in a dehistoricized, dehistoricized time or in the present continuous of a social actuality. And going back to Ivani's film, the tableau-like image becomes an evasive fold of the photographic within the filmic, of the animate uh, within the inanimate, of death within life. What Laura Mulvey calls the abrupt, the abrupt shift uh, from the cinema's illusion of animated movement to its inorganic, inanimate state will become visible also in the disappearance of the image, in the white emptiness of the frame, the fading out of the screen which literally lays bare the materiality, the non-discursive sensuality of the, of the medium. Um, however, some authors cr criticized in a way or the dehistoricized abstract representation of violence, the art house distancing effect of the film, its refusal to align the viewer with the three women's point of view, for example, uh, for example, this is what uh, Thomas Bayer says, as well as its naturalistic rather than political argumentation according to which the causes of social violence are natural and inevitable, deter determined by the physical environment. Uh, others, however, point to a, di a directorial, uh, directorial call to resistance in the closing lyrics, quote, open your eyes, my growing son, there's hard work to be done, uh, end of quote. What is overlooked in this kind of argumentation is the film is that the film does not primarily present itself as a uh, diagnosis, as a sociographical or whatever diagnosis of a historical or, or social issue, nor does it unequivocally present the landscape as the environment, uh, as an environment uh, in a deterministic explanation of, or, of violence or tragedy. What is also overlooked is the fact that the film has a media reflexive reference rather than an unequivocal referential relation to some kind of historical reality. What we see is a highly citational cultural cinematic landscape in which the three women are not only spectators in an execution scene, but also through their bodies they are also um, living embodied quotations of a photograph characters in a media referential um, uh, tableau vivant inserted into a cinematic landscape. Uh, however, what is also uh, important in my um, uh, opinion is that the camera abandons the safe panoramic optical distance of visual mastery and non-interference 
exactly in the scene of the execution, traveling among the tracking among the equally motionless, uh, motionless living and dead bodies. The close-up of a bystander's coat makes visible the relief, the texture of the material in an almost haptic palpable image, as if the camera was touching the surface in the vulnerability of nearness. Um, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm just going to show you that this, uh, there is another, uh, it, it's not, no time for talking about this, but uh, there, there is another uh, reenactment uh, of the photograph of uh, Lucian Hervé's photograph in, Godard, na, in Godard's 1967 film Weekend, um, well, in a different context, but uh, also in, um, within a long panoramic uh, take, um, um, uh, we hear classical music, uh, uh, we are in a, uh, we see a farmyard, a long panoramic take, and the camera is sliding or is choreographed according to Mozart music. Um, even his other short film, <clears throat> Ballad from 2005, renouncing the transparent quality of the image unfolds as an extended uh, uh, digital narrativized cinematic tableau vivant, dispersing any illusion of realistic representation. The film was inspired by Giuseppe Pelizza da Volpedo's well known painting, The Fourth Estate from 1901, um, which also appeared in Bernardo Bertolucci's Novecento. In Italian art history, the painting is canonized as a celebration of the idea of humanitarian socialism using the theme of a procession of work, uh, using the theme of workers processing here. Bertolucci's Novecento quotes the painting in the credit sequence, in, I say in compliance with those canonizing interpretations that stress the socio-political context or subtext of the work uh, within art historical discourses and not only. Um, and um, I say that the, the film, Bertolucci's film, quotes the painting not only thematically but also through its allegorical uh, aspect. Um, Ivani's film, uh, with the con within the conditions of digital image making, returns to a more archaic form of narration and constructs not a historical but a balladistic narrative and a cinematic tableau that unframes uh, Pelizza da Volpedo's, Pelizza da Volpedo's painting in a um, somewhat decanonizing manner. The social political embeddedness of the work is less emphatic. The emphasis is more on the domestic sphere, on the private sphere, on infidelity, punishment, and so on. However, in ballads, the private uh, or uh, the private trauma, and I'm going to show you. Um, uh, um, sorry, um, a few. And this is um, evoking the painting in a more obvious way. And uh, in the beginning, the, the film also displays um, uh, the fourth estate, um, of course, the reproduction of, uh, of the painting, the fourth estate. Um, uh, yes. Um, so the emphasis is more on the domestic sphere, on infidelity punishment, and um, uh, 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 domestic traumas, but in ballads, the private or familial trauma and tragedy was often is often a symptom of social and economic tensions, inequalities, conflicts within a specific socio-historical context. In Ivani's film, one encounters classical balladistic requisites like the problem of privation, revenge, infidelity, domestic violence, the victimization of women. But the relationship between all these is not based on a clear-cut causality. The, the film remains narrative and dramatically laconic, uh, balladistic, but pictorially dense. The artificiality of the film is foregrounded not only by the tableau-like imagery, which, which is like the painted scenery of a performance, but also through the use of a completely fictive language, which however is translated into Hungarian, and uh, this can also be identified as a, as a distancing gesture. The film is disconnected from a particular linguistic, ethnic, socio-cultural context, and it becomes its own context as a cinematic painting recollecting actual painting and balladistic, uh, balladistic panels in an elliptical narrative, as uh, if not the particularity, the singularity of the events um, was profoundly unsettling, but their predictability, their continual iterability, repeatability, and return. In the over-stylized painterly imagery, the pictorial reference shifts uh, towards the sensual through the medium of the body, whereas the body, while being carnal, vulnerable, and wounded, is always already other, a quotation of an image overwritten by pictorial conventions. 
the digital work done on the image, as well as the balladistic narration and the fictive language, foreground artifice and underline that the body or the real is not the ultimate referent of the image, but only one of the ingredients in the process of image production. And in, in, the, in this case, this also might point to the condi post-media conditions of, of digital image making. In Ivani's two short films, the tableau vivants performing unframing and reframing gestures, also the historicized do domestic or social violence and inaction. The cinematic tableaus reframe the representation of brutality, death or trauma within a more aestheticizing context in which the social, cultural, historical embeddedness becomes vaguer, more abstract and less sharp politically. These tableaus, as a continual fold between um, the filmic and the photographic, the filmic and the painterly, imageness and corporeality, artifice and life, life and death, offer photofilmic and painterly images to look at, uh, which are, however, unsettling and culturally symptomatic enough to appeal to the spectator's uh, social or ethical sensitivity. The cinematic tableaus, together with long takes and the slow-paced filmic imagery, situate Ivani's short films, I say, within broader tendencies of aestheticizing that characterize a part of recent Hungarian auteur cinema. And uh, I, I would like to end, the, um, not with a big conclusion, but uh, with the last Lokrasna Horkai's uh, words uh, from the novel, The Melancholy of Resistance, uh, which I say these words could be a motto not only of the long take and cinematic stillness or slow cinema, but also of a certain cultural discomfort that keeps returning uh, and is being worked on in these films, marked by existential or social vulnerability, uncertainty, or even paralysis. And the words are, uh, quote, it passes, but it does not pass away. Uh, thank you. because I didn't hear the first part. So I mentioned the similarity, you said. the yes. mm -hmm. so go on the page, but I was wondering in which way uh, the latter with references go dark or the photographs, in which way the similarities um, play in the film. Because as you say, it's also a long day. Uh, yes, so uh, it, it would be interesting to, 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 to uh, precisely because uh, we see the reenactment or the, the tableau vivant sequence of, of this photograph, but um, in a totally, um, in a totally uh, uh, different context, uh, the, the technique of the long panoramic take is similar, but it returns, so uh, it takes a reverse uh, movement as well. Um, the, um, the, uh, it is like, um, it's full of um, other living quotation, cultural intertext, as you say. Um, uh, the whole thing is, is, um, uh, is in a farmyard, and the whole film is, is, is heavy with cultural, literary quotations, living quotations from literary text emerging as, 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 as living, um, you know, per characters. So um, uh, what I say is, is not, it's not their similarity, in fact, but just the fact that, that uh, I, I say that it would be interesting to, to, to see the differences, not mm, in, in the technique. In Godard, I think it's more like subversive, uh, more ironical or satirical in a way, the whole context that post-apocalyptic film uh, as well. So. Um, um, the whole texture of the film um, is, is different, yes. Yes? It's been so interesting to see these clips from films that I don't know, and um, that I wish I did know, I hope to know. Uh, and I'm wondering, I know she said, um, that these films are, tend to be very self-referential, but also um, to refer to other um, to paintings and, and uh, photographs. Um, and I wonder whether in, anyone can tell us why, why Central and Eastern European films, why there is this 
uh, seems a very extreme and interesting um, fixation on other images. I, I wonder if you've ever discussed that amongst yourselves. It's a very good question. We are trying to answer with lots of words. <laughs> so no quick three three word answer. No easy answer. Yeah, no. Yeah. It doesn't have to do with the legitimation, self-legitimation of the cinemas, perhaps. You know, to to I'm sure I just that the one part of the answer is that the history of the cinema tries to connect with local art cinema. So if uh, this means that using these techniques uh, makes these films more accessible, and then I'm sure this is the, the case. But I'm, I'm also convinced this is only part of the answer. Mm -hmm. So not the whole answer uh, to this uh, question. Exactly because I see similar tendencies in other uh, films, like in Mexican uh, Carlos Vegadas, mm -hmm. for instance. Maybe that's also some kind of minority cinema trying to reconnect with local art cinema. I'm not sure, but it's not specific uh, in that sense in Eastern Europe, mm -hmm. uh, Asian cinema, uh, or, or in, again, I'm putting uh, viola. You can't uh, accuse viola of uh, minority in any respect. So part of it, yes. Part of it I see as a global tendency in, in contemporary art. There's this uh, a reconnection with, with uh, art history. I'm not going to Can I speculate that one factor in it is it's in fact global um, is really mundane, which is that uh, that imagery is so much more accessible now. I mean, it, it, there's a digital archive to which everybody is referring, but not only is it, do you not have to have a great art library to, to reference the images, that's because those images are, are hit Google searches. And, I mean, there's a, there's a kind of um, archival web of common uh, culture. And this is, in, in the East, there's a, a common culture that was repressed for a long time, so it's also kind of like perhaps a return of the. Yes, but then there's also the question why this type of art? Why these paintings? Because you can access any painting by Picasso in the Hilton Picasso, or rock, or, or abstract, marginal, or, or special. So this is also very interesting. There's a, a very long essay written by uh, Stephen Shaviro on the last one, three years in Alancolia, which also quotes uh, these paintings. And there's a very interesting theory in there of why. And there's a scene, a symbolic scene there, where this neurotic uh, heroine of the story replaces the uh, abstract paintings with uh, paintings of Caravaggio and Lodge. So why this pre-modern uh, painting resurfacing now? That's a very challenging question. Thank you. No, 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 I just, um, I was looking at Yutka if I'm, <laughs> or there are, no, thank you.